One of many genres that has seen a rise in popularity in recent memory is the NES style platforming game. It all started when some evil man created I Wanna Be the Guy. It was trying to be one of the hardest games of all time, and has become one of those games where if you wanted to call yourself a gamer with an elite level of skill, then you had to finish it. This led to many other games that had no mercy in its level design, and will cut your hand off if you aren't careful. 1001 Spice is yet another one of those games. While I do get why these games are a lot of fun to a lot of players, it ends up putting itself in such a niche market that I can barely recommend it to people other than the hardcore or the extremely skilled. The development is much like any other independently developed game. It was developed and published by Nicalis Incorporated, released to the PlayStation 3, Xbox One, Wii U, Nintendo 3DS, and Steam in 2014. Nicalis is a pretty fresh company as far as a gaming developer is concerned. Since being established in 2007, they've released quite a few games. According to Wikipedia, they've developed a lot of mobile games, but have come into the light with some pretty popular indie games, including Cave Story, The Binding of Isaac series, and they've published V to 3DS. So as far as I know, since developing The Binding of Isaac, they've become a pretty good developer. The storyline of 1001 Spikes is pretty basic. According to Wikipedia, you play as either Avon or Tina, the son or daughter of Jim Hawkins, a world renowned archaeologist who has been lost within the frozen tundra of Antarctica. Before his disappearance, his daughter Tina is left with a map to the forgotten ruins of South America. Together with her extreme brother Avon, they explore the temple and try to retrieve their father's legacy. So if you've ever played a game like Uncharted or watched Indiana Jones, then you know where the plot is going. The graphics are very retro. The game looks like it came out on an old 8-bit system like the NES. The levels are well-defined, pixelated, and fans of that style, or grew up with those games, will enjoy the look. My only problem is that, at this point, a lot of games have come out with this kind of look before. If you take a quick look through the independent section of Steam, you'll find that they are a dime a dozen. So on one hand, I like the look, but fans of 2D platforming games will start to find that this look is getting old. The audio is classic 8-bit, the music and sound effects are authentic to era is trying to portray, and it's a pretty memorable soundtrack. The tracks will get stuck in your head for days on end. So it does its job well, nothing more, nothing less. My only issue is that, again, this is going to sound old if you played a bunch of these more recently. So take it for what you will. The gameplay is well done for what it is, but the problem is that I can never see myself finishing it anytime soon. The game, like I said, is a 2D platform game in the style of games like Solomon's Key. You gotta go from point A to grab a key and get to point B. You, you get a standard jump, a super jump, a throwing weapon, and a thousand and one lives to finish the game. To top it all off, the controls work fantastically. Moving around is done with pixel precision, and any jump that you make that leads to you dying is due more to your poor planning. The level design is fairly well done. Most death traps are predictable to veterans, have a rhythm to them, and any mistakes that are made are your own fault. Much like games like I Wanna Be The Guy or the angry video game Nerd Adventures, you really got to draw out a map of the most effective way to complete a level. There's also a skip level feature if you're ready to rip out your hair and can see yourself beating said level. Now here's where I kind of take my stand and say that I think that the developers were aiming more so at gamers who are either masochists, grew up with nothing but games like Battletoads, or they're extremely hardcore. Don't get me wrong, this is a good game for fans of that kind of game, but here's why I personally hate 1001 Spikes. I personally believe that good platforming games are puzzle games in disguise. Take a look at Mario, Bubble Bobble, or Mega Man. These are games where you have different elements you have to deal with to accomplish a goal, whether it be to get to the flagpole or whatever. You have to use elements of the levels to get from point A to point B. Games like I Wanna Be The Guy feel like a series of death traps that they throw at you to figure out how to get around. Not to mention if you're off by a pixel one one thousandth of a second on a jump or don't have the rhythm to every death trap memorized, then this game will destroy you time after time. So as a good 2D platforming game, this game is a fail. As a platforming game that is more along the lines of games like the impossible game, then this does its job fairly well. So in conclusion, I will say this again. If this is your style of game, then you will fall in love with the 1001 Spikes. Everyone else like me or an average gamer, I think you're going to rip out your hair long before you finish this game. Overall, 1001 Spikes is a good game, but not for me. On one hand, fans of games like Battletoads will love its no mercy level design. On the other hand, if you're an average skill level gamer, then 
this game is a nightmare. So look into what kind of gamer you are and how patient you are because your patience will be tested. I had enough fun to get why people love this kind of game, but I understand it's not designed with my skill level or my level of patience in mind. For that, I would give it a 7.5 out of 10 for a game in this niche market. For me to be objective in what I like, then I could give it any more than a 5.5 out of 10. It's not unplayable, but I wouldn't go out of my way to play it ever again.